Oh, look at that, welcome back to the channel. We do have an entire battery bank of Sam Energy right here. And that's what the video is about. Sam Energy 100 amp hour lithium phosphate 12.8 volt battery. Not only one, we have four of them. Welcome back to the channel. In case you are looking for a battery, like a mini battery, like those batteries you see here, you want to have not only one, you want to have multiple of those batteries and you don't know about the quality inside of this battery, you're in the right video. We will look into the battery, how is the build quality, how to serious connect them or parallel connect them. We'll do both to give you an understanding how easy it is to set it up. Common hand tools, you can buy it off the shelf, everything you need and you want to have a small footprint. That's right, your video. So we'll get started with looking at this battery. So first and foremost, as always, we are looking, by the way, those are four batteries. They come in this nice black and turquoise colored. It's not even, no, it's not glued. It is printed on here, it looks like. You can buy it in a one battery configuration and the price is insane. Um, here's a screenshot. It's a ripping $137 plus tax at the moment here on amazon.com. Link in the description below in case you're interested in it. Checking that out and see what the reviews and other stuff is, you know, just looks like. But you also can buy it in a set of two, three or four. This is the set of four, what you can see here. This is pretty cool. And you also get one of those user manuals. You do get those bolts already. They are not M8 bolts. I would say the M6 bolts. They come with a display over here. This is upside down right now. Um, we'll look at that also a little closer. And nice little handle. Let's jump right into the specification before we do anything else like the capacity test, um, how to connect them parallel series, or even the teardown. They do have a footprint of a mini battery, but they don't call it a mini battery, which I think is very interesting and I, I did not expect, to be honest. So this housing size, here's, here's just dimensions and also the weight of this battery because I think it's fairly important to understand for you. Um, in the screenshot they call it a mini but they did not call this out here on, on the label outside anything it's not a mini uh, but that's the only size battery they offer um, of, and they have small ones like 6 amp hour and a 7 amp hour so this is 100 amp hour we're talking about. They do say it's 8 grade battery cells so we'll be looking into that. The screenshot indicates that it's um, Prismatic cells, four of them. We'll see if that is the case. It does come with some protections, something like over discharge, overcharge, short circuit, high temperature, and over current. In this screenshot, you don't see any low temperature connection or whatsoever. Uh, so that might be the case. Maybe not. I had multiple times the case. They even come with a low temperature protection, but they don't highlight it or don't, they don't even write it in the description. So you never know what until you open it up, and then we can also see how much clue or not clue or bolts or whatever they used inside this. I would assume that it's pretty compact. So we'll be really curious uh, when opening it up. So let me get you a closer look into that. So here we're looking at a battery laying at the moment. So quality indication when it was built, right at the seal. So as soon as I open it, I do not have any warranty on this anymore. We're looking here at the battery. We do have those caps with the bolts and you can turn it on here. You click on it and then you see the voltage. It's most likely just the voltage reading, nothing else. And then we have here over also the positive. And there's a nice little handle. And it looks like they use bolts here. So I'll try to open it up, but I think they also use glue from what I've seen already. So the state of charge, 13.7, 13.5, 13.5. And this one was also 13.7 back here. In the meantime, we'll be looking at the specification a little bit more about the parameters. So we have the cell chemistry, which is lithium and phosphate battery, nominal voltage 12.8, and capacity is 100 amp hour. And the energy is 12, 1280 watt hours. So 12.8 volts times 100 amp hour. The battery management system board BMS is rated to 100 amp. Maximum continuous charge, but also discharge is according to the parameters 100 amp. Charge voltage uh, for this chemistry 40.6 volts. Um, the charge I'm using here is exactly rated like that. Cycle life 4,000 times, that's what they indicate here in the perimeter section. And the recommended charging current is 20 amps, which is 0.2C. The max discharge current for five seconds, it's 200 amps. I'm really curious, uh, we'll do a high discharge test. You can skip this part in case you want to. In the meantime, I got already some wires. You can buy them off the shelf, as I mentioned, I'll link in the description below. 
I just made those. Those are, I believe, uh, four gauge what I'm using here. And as always, depending on your system as well as what is battery is possible, or those batteries are possible and capable of pushing out, you need to size your system accordingly. So for the first configuration, I line everything up, try to make it nice and neat, turn on all those little voltage readers, and you can see 13.8, the first one. And you have to turn them on, then they stay on forever. So you have to turn them off if you want to. And every single one, 13.8, 13.9, 13.9, and 13.7. So you see there have quite interesting difference, even though the charger said it's full. That may be because they are still balancing. So that's definitely the case. So make sure you charge your battery all the way to full. And here you can see all the batteries. I don't want to bore you too much, so I'll speed this point up, but we'll do the parallel connection first. So what does that mean? Parallel connection means we'll connect positive and positive, negative and negative. So one, whoop, whoop. And the same we'll do with the negative side. So. Alrighty, there we are. That's how you connect it in parallel. Now we have main negative here, main positive on this side. So we can attach the loads. You should have the main negative, main positive, never on the same battery ideally, because then it's depleting more evenly. So right now what's happening most likely, now we are at a voltage 13.8, 13.8, 13.8, 13.8. So what's happening is if there's any unequal uh, distribution of the capacity, uh, it will equalize it. There we go. I uh, will measure the voltage. Therefore, I'll take the main positive, main negative, which means I'm going over here. And now we see 13.83. Well, I see it. I hope you see it too. Let me connect the charger. And we can see the voltage is increasing 13.95, 96, until the pack is saying it's full. And we also, so I'm seeing here also on those voltage readers, it is going up. So now we're at 14.01, at least according to my voltage reader. Now we are switching here, the display is also all to 14, there we are. So it's pretty close at the moment, it looks like. So that's just wanted to prove the point. They are actually connected properly. <laughs> so now we have 400 amp hour of battery power in here. You can do the math yourself, obviously, but really quick and don't touch any metal, but we are 23 inches in length and we do have around nine inches on width. Fairly small setup. Let's continue with the serious connection on how to do that and wire them correctly up. Well, now we'll focus on the serious connection, which will bump up our 12.8 volt to 51.2 volts. And that's equivalent to the 48 volt battery, as you know, and it will keep the same amp hours. So 51.2 volts and 100 amp hours. And in this case, I laid it out. I'm not touching the terminals, but it will go from negative to positive, negative to positive, negative to positive. And then we have the main negative and the main positives over here. I'll try to speed up for you so you're not getting bored too much. All right, there we are, I'm almost done. On the main negative, which is one side, and main positive, which is on the other side. So we should have 51.2-ish, 56.02, because they're fully charged. We just disconnected the charge earlier. So what's happening now, and that is the interesting part, we connected them, we multiplied their voltages together just with three wires just that you understand you can use this now you can just have a main 
negative over here, main positive over here, and the end, the end, and then you can connect something. To be honest, this is a very cheap entry with those little mini batteries, also very small footprint, which is amazing. This is all I wanted to show you for, for the configuration with parallel and serious connection. And I'll get started with the capacity test right away. So it should be around 20 amps, a little bit more probably. Basically close to 0.2C to get an adequate reading and uh, we'll get back with the results when this battery is depleted and discharged completely. Looks like we already passed the capacity test with 103 amp hour at the very least and it's still pulling a little bit more it looks like but here we are. Alright, battery fully charged, we're ready to go. Let's see how much we can pull. Reminder, 100 amp continuous discharge should be possible. And up to 200 amp for maximum of five seconds. That looks pretty good with 150 already. <laughs> we'll see how long that one can run. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Oh dang. I don't think this BMS is shutting off after five seconds. Or at least giving us five seconds. Just double checking. Here it does say it. Maximum discharge current five seconds, 200 amp. And we can see 208, 207. Let's see how far up we can go. Most likely my water will yell first. Continue doing that well. Yep, I can feel. Why is it getting warmer? That's for sure here. It's the hottest spot probably. The fuse. Oh yeah. You yelling at me? <laughs> Alrighty. Completed his test. Well, I actually just wanted to stop, but I realized the battery is dead. It just shut off. I didn't even realize that. Oh, it was back up for a second. But that's about it. It comes back up and then it stops. Ooh, let's see. Let's see what happened to this battery. Okay, it looks like it's back. It looks like it was just the heat. <laughs> Scary moment. But it protected itself, it looks like. F error code F04, I guess. Didn't find anything in the manual, but here we are. Back up. I'll charge everything fully up. All right, I cracked it open for you. And there we have it. There we have it. Ooh. Well then, around. The funniest thing for me is always when you <laughs> see the identity form that they didn't peel off the, the double-sided adhesive, which is fine because it's so dense in here. So here we are. Alrighty, what do we see? We do see a lot. First and foremost, we do see prismatic cells. That is, that is really good. We also do see this QR code. That means it's called Create Power. They are manufactured this year, it looks like. Huishu. Nice. There's actually some kind of information in here. Not too much, but there's some. So that is good. Laser welded terminals over here. We have those bus bars, which have a little hump here for contraction and expansion. We do see there's some high density foam on the side. There's a hoxy board up here. So the BMS is not touching uh, the cells. We do some kind of little, little tiny bit something in between, maybe fish paper or something. Uh, we do see there's, nope. Well, there's not a, there's a little here, little tension on, on this balance leads. They go all the way around here on this side. So they go all the way around here to this side, circle back here, and then they end here. And we can see that we have the negative balance leads over, lead over here. We do have some temperature sensor hidden underneath here somewhere. Let's see where it is. 
it is down here it's glued to a cell here at least it's glued it's on the sides get this out in a second we see that those vents they are able to breathe if needed even though it's closed here with the side of the housing there's the top of the housing and you saw already it's wiggling around which i didn't like as much it's only holding in here by this uh, laser belt so is that good or not i don't know cable management they don't have a lot it's a little tight here everything else seems to be having enough slack we do have main positive which is a six gauge wire it's hydraulically crimped this one did bend when i took it out so the, by the force of me pulling the lid out or up that's got bent uh, i don't see too much glue except for of course here instead of torque marks they use glue i would assume okay not big of a deal here the same with those connections to the bms the main negative well actually yeah main negative here as well then let's see yeah looks good and solid so far here you can see just the voltage reader going off main terminal positive and negative I like those hydraulic crimps from the 6 gauge wire. Negative has two 8 gauge wire. Yeah, I like that. It's pretty nice. Good wire. It's good heat shrink on there as well. I like that as well. In general, I like what you see. The cells seem to be pretty new. They have a good marking. Positive and negative here as well, which I'm surprised. And the use packing tab on the bottom. Right there. Let's do a high temp and cold temp cutoff test. All right, let's see if we can charge it. There it is, it's charging a little bit. I'm reducing here, there we go. Let's see if it tricks, triggers and protects it. And there it is, nice. That's what I'm talking about. Let's see if it comes back. It's probably fully charged right now. Oh, nope, there it is, nice. Okay, let's see if we can get it. Well, the dust is super cold, but oh, no, nope, nothing, nope, no. All right, I think now we have done enough. No cold temperature cutoff. That's pretty much it, what I wanted to do here. You saw high temperature cutoff it does have. Oh, the cold one doesn't have it. So one thing I want to comment as well, because we did the high discharge test and um, it does overheat at one point. Obviously, I did the test with a lot of current going out. Yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you think about this. Um, video got longer than I expected, but there was a lot to cover and I feel like parallel and series connection is always good to understand how that works and how easy and simple it can be, especially when you're looking into starting with that. And this battery has a cheap, cheap price point to just get started with, I think, quality parts. It looks like the only thing what I don't know is about the BMS, what it is, and it doesn't come with Bluetooth. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.